Hi everyone, my name is Navia. I'm one of the consultants here at Study Hall College Consulting. And today I wanted to talk to you all about my recent blog post about extracurriculars as a pre-medical student. So extracurriculars are really any type of activity that you're doing outside your typical academic experience. And typically these types of things are really important for things that you're applying to after undergrad. As a pre-med student, these types of extracurriculars are especially important because they are really one way that you can shine on your application to medical schools. Frankly, I think it's the best way to stand out as a unique candidate. So of course, grades, your MCAT scores, your test scores, all of these things are very important. But what's really more important in my opinion is to have a diverse set of extracurricular activities that proves that you're a holistic candidate. So for me, coming into undergrad, I knew that there were a few things that I definitely had to get involved in, but I knew that there were other things that I just wanted to get involved in as a personal choice. Um, and both categories, you know, things that I knew I had to do versus things that I wanted to do for myself. Both of those kind of categories are things that I have been able to include in my current applications to schools. So first and foremost, I wanted to go through the things that you definitely need. So firstly, community service and volunteering. This is pretty typical. Um, I don't think it would come as a surprise to anybody. Um, giving back to your community is really engraved into the past, into the practice of medicine altogether. So it's really important that you show that on your applications. You show that you had got involved in some type of activities while you were an undergrad student. So for some students, this means, you know, volunteering at a soup kitchen, volunteering, um, you know, at a food pantry, or maybe you tutor kids, or maybe you work at the local hospital, or maybe, you know, you volunteer in a science museum. Really it just means whatever it wants to be for yourself you know everyone has their own interests but at the base level you know as long as you're giving back to the community you're giving back to underserved communities or you're giving back to someone or something in one way shape or form that's really important and in general i mean for anything really it's definitely quality over quantity you don't want to be getting involved in too many things that are short-term experiences it's definitely more valuable to have longer term experiences that are maybe fewer in number. So, you know, for example, take the example of volunteering in a hospital, you know, if you do that two years, that's a lot more valuable than, you know, working in a soup kitchen for a couple of months and working at a homeless shelter for another couple of months or something like that. So definitely incorporate community service in some capacity. Next is research. I did a whole other blog post about how to find research opportunities, so be sure to check that out. But in general, research is, of course, it's really important. Um, academic research is very ingrained into the medical school curriculum or just like it's an option for you to pursue when you're in that career path. So most schools like to see that you are involved in some level of that. There are some schools that do value it a little bit more than others, but I would say as you know, a general note, it's, it's wise to get involved in it in some way. So that could be, you know, a summer internship at a local laboratory or a school laboratory, or maybe it's a long-term thing that you're doing at your university research group, or, you know, you're invited to do some other like private research thing as an internship, something like that. So really this means different things for everyone. You could do, you know, typical biomedical research, you could do public health research, you could really do it in anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be STEM focused. You know, I know there's people that do history research and they're still able to apply that experience to medicine in some way. So just think about what you might be interested in. Research is something that does require a lot of diligence and a lot of effort and a lot of kind of focus. So if you're not interested in the topic, you, you can only go so far. So I definitely recommend that you take your time with that, find an opportunity that you are really engaged in and can really see through you know, some long period of time. Next is clinical experiences. This is, at least personally, this was something that was the most difficult for me to get involved in. As an undergrad student that's pre-med, you know you need to get involved in some type of clinical experience, but often it's difficult to find very fulfilling opportunities when you don't have a certificate or a license or things like that. So often what I've seen is that students will shadow physicians, they will act as a medical scribe or medical assistant. There's a ton of different free clinics um, and Berkeley has something called a suitcase clinic. So 
the student run clinics that kind of go around the underserved communities within the university or like the surrounding area. That's a really common way that people get clinical experience. I would say I know a lot of people that use their gaps. So their summers between semesters or their winter breaks between semesters to really rack up those hours because it can be a little bit difficult when you're in a school semester or quarter. Um, so if you want to, you know, shadow a doctor for a month when you're on winter break or something that could totally work. Personally, for me, um, you know, this again, like I said, this was a little bit difficult for me to engage in just because, you know, it's hard when you have so much going on in undergrad. Um, but that's why I'm currently in my gap year doing a clinical experience job as a scribe and an assistant. So I found that that's really helpful. Um, you know, typically these experiences are meant to reinforce and just solidify your decision to pursue medicine altogether. So, you know, schools do like to see that you have engaged in those opportunities before you apply so that when you're doing your application, you can write about, hey, I did this opportunity and this is what it means to me. And this is why I think it'll set me up for success in medicine. So that type of thing is definitely really important. And then next, just two other kind of broad categories that aren't necessarily requirements, um, but they're things that I personally noticed are common threads. So firstly, um, leadership in any capacity, this doesn't have to be like in a science or a medicine capacity. It could be, you know, in whatever club that you're in um, or, you know, some other student government type of opportunity or some other type of service opportunity where you're an acting leader in the group. That is a really important quality to have, you know, proving that you can work with the team and you have communication skills and you have interpersonal skills. That is really, really important and very valuable. And I think schools really appreciate seeing that you can take initiative and kind of um, have control over a group and be able to delegate tasks and, you know, get things done basically. So leadership is really important. Um, and another thing that people really like to do is teaching or tutoring. So typically after your first year, or your first couple years, you'll have taken some of the more difficult courses in your undergrad career, and they will often have opportunities for these students that have completed the class to go ahead and then tutor students who are taking the class the next semester. So that could be something like, you know, tutoring or teaching privately for very specific subjects or you could do something where you're involved in the core staff teaching team. Um, you know, many courses themselves will recruit students from their previous semesters to teach students, you know, going into the semester. So those are definitely things that, you know, I think personally a lot of people choose to get involved in. And then finally, any other extracurricular activities. So in addition to all those kind of required recommended type activities, the rest of your activities is completely up to you. And I highly recommend that you take time and you listen to yourself and you figure out what you might be interested in. Maybe you want to play a sport or continue a sport that you did in high school. Maybe you want to play music or study music or you know, give back to the community through music in some capacity. Um, maybe you wanna, like I said, maybe you wanna do student government. Maybe you want to start your own dance club or something like that. So really that is your biggest chance to shine as an applicant. Um, those are typically the non-traditional things that will really help applicants, you know, make themselves or prove themselves as people that are bigger than the academic setting. They really prove themselves as holistic candidates by saying, hey, you know, this activity that I did was definitely not required, definitely not something that I did for medical school, but I did it anyway because I enjoyed it and this is what I learned from it. That type of experience is really valuable. So definitely um, don't be afraid to get involved in things that you want to get involved in just because you think that it's not traditionally pre-med. Um, again, those things tend to be the best ways to stand out. For me personally, um, just to touch on a few things that I did throughout undergrad, um, I did research, I did academic research um, in biomedical spaces as well as in public health research. I worked as a health advocate at a local public hospital. I did nonprofit work in a couple of different organizations. I tutored organic chemistry. Um, and then some of the non-traditional things, I did a lot of music things. And I was also a campus tour guide. So I did a lot. Um, and again, all of these things were things that I was able to include in my application. So altogether, there's so much that you can do. It can feel really overwhelming um, and it can be very easy to compare yourself to other people. I think one thing that I did that I wish I hadn't was that I saw that there were a lot of people gravitating towards a few different 
activities, but I was thinking about, okay, hey, I want to stand out. I don't want to do all the same activities, but really any activity you can make your own by just, you know, having your own story, having your own narrative through it. So if there's something that you want to do, definitely go after it. It'll definitely prove to be an asset in some way or the other. Um, and just kind of keep track of the things that you maybe have to do or are, you know, things that are common threads for applicants, but at the same time, take time to, you know, do the things that you actually want to do and, and expand your horizons a little bit. So I hope that was helpful. I would love to chat with any of you all about this further. Maybe you want to talk about some of my experiences. So if you do definitely check out our website and schedule a consulting call with one of us and I or another person from our team will be more than happy to help you out. So good luck and let us know if you need any help.